before we came on, we were just talking a little bit about uh, Richard Dawkins' literary criticism. Uh, he 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 objects uh, <laughs> to uh, falsehoods being perpetrated by literature, like like for example that that a human being could uh, wake up one day after troubled dreams and and have transformed into a cockroach, and and he's going to tell us as a biologist that that could not happen. <laughs> Well, you know, Ben, there's no surface, there's no center to the surface of the Earth, and so this whole idea of there being a so-called Middle Earth is ridiculous, right? So oh, that's a good point. Yeah, we gotta get rid of a lot of these kind of ideas because they're mm -hmm. baffling our yeah. children and getting them to believe in unscientific mm -hmm. ideas and other kinds of nonsense. This mm -hmm. is cutting edge. This is where I can speak from personal experience. This is where liter literary studies is headed. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, I, I talked to the council last night. We're at about 80 per, 87 percent. We're just going to, you know, purge from the canon. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Empirically impossible. So, yeah. <laughs> what is this so called Star Wars? I didn't actually see any stars fighting with one another. No. Zero stars. No. <laughs> you know? yeah. well, Frankenstein I mean, is gone. It's gone. Just yeah. Gone. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Dickens, Ghost on Christmas. Come on, you're out now. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that, and, and it doesn't even it doesn't even make sense because I mean they do the dream where it shows the Christmas future, but then like that doesn't happen. So which yeah. which is it? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> logically impossible. <laughs> I know be, exactly. You know, it wasn't the future. <laughs> Ergo is contradictory. We got to start yeah. banning Scrooge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's he's almost as good, by the way. I should say. Um, you know, when, when he turns from literary criticism to moral philosophy. Um, so uh, I want to say like 10 years ago uh, when uh, Ryan and I were both uh, graduate students. Yeah, I don't know. I might have, I might have <laughs> finished up, but they, whatever. It's a, uh, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we were both still hanging around uh, the, uh, yeah. the uni uh, University of Miami uh, Richard Dawkins came and gave a talk there. Uh, my um, dissertation advisor, Otavio Bueno, uh, introduced him at the at the thing, which was which was exciting for some of us because it was the uh, first time any of uh, anybody had ever seen Otavio wear a tie. Uh, he said it's the the first time he'd done it since his wedding. You know, was to introduce Richard Dawkins. Uh, but I, I gotta say, I, I don't think. I don't think Dawkins lived up to the tie uh, at, at the talk because th there was this there's this really strange moment. And this is going to sound like I'm making it up because, uh, OK, come on. He didn't say that. He did. Uh, he was talking <laughs> about his support for uh, the Grade 8 project, which is something that Peter Singer and other people are involved with to try to basically give some of the most advanced apes some of the legal rights that people have. Which you know, whatever. I'm all in favor of that. I think we should be nice to apes, uh, but not necessarily Muslims from Dawkins' perspective. Though. <laughs> apes, yes, Muslims, no, though. That's right. we got to be careful in making these distinctions, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. No slippery slopes from orangutans to Muslims. No, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but but his his justification for it was weird. He, he said. Oh, I remember this now. Yes, I remember this argument. Oh my God! Yes, yes. There's a witness oh as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there uh, is a witness that I'm not making this up. So he had this thought yeah. experiment where you're supposed to imagine all the <laughs> generations of people, uh, and and he set it up in a very poetic way that they were all like gathered around the edge of a lake, and you know, and, and in each case. Uh, it was like mothers and daughters. Uh, the mm -hmm. and the like mother like daughter holding hands with her mother, holding hands with her mother, holding hands with her mother, you know, around the edge of this giant lake and said, and you go all the way back to the, the common ancestor, you know, with, with these great apes uh, that they, they want to give these protections to. And so go all the way back to the ancestor, go all the way up to, to current great apes. And they said, well, you couldn't make a principal distinction between any two links in this chain that uh, any, any mother, daughter, mm -hmm. parents say, Oh, this one is a person and this one is not. And he said that the mm -hmm. distinctions would be so subtle that to do that, you'd have to end up making distinctions as arbitrary as the racial laws from apartheid South Africa. And, and so, so really given that, you know, there's, there's no justification uh, for, uh, for, for treating, you know, for like treating 
like the great apes differently than, than you treat humans, I guess. I think he's obscuring yeah. the key point, though, which is that apes are admirable because they don't believe in God, right? They're more rational than we are, and that's the <laughs> number one selling point for them, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what I love about this argument is how you could extend that to like literally any other creature, yeah. like a tree, uh, yeah. a, the COVID nineteen virus, like whatever, like, <laughs> like holding the chain, go, holding the hands all the way back to our common ancestor with viruses. I'm like, well, hey, we can't draw a, this principled line at any point in that chain. So those two trees were touching hands, or branches, <laughs> yeah. Ergo, yeah. part of the human yep. family. Yeah, well, yeah. well, exactly. Like, you know, like, why not go to the common ancestor with the mosquito or, you know, like, the, yeah. uh, like whatever, you know, like, yeah, uh, yeah which is actually a, a really, I mean, not his intention, but uh, a really useful demonstration of the uh, the continuum fallacy, right? Just because just you don't know where to draw the line in a series of shades of gray doesn't mean there aren't clear cases on both ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he says really fucking bizarre things. Well, that's we've already gotten through that, right? Like bizarre things in praise of people where I don't really think he understands the implications of their positions. I saw an interview he did with Peter Singer, right? You know, utilitarian Peter Singer. And he was like, this is beautiful. You know, your thought is so logical and consistent and I really like it. And I was like, I don't know, Dick. You know, you said some really elitist things and some very pro-capitalist things. And I'm not really sure if you've delved that deeply into Singer's arguments because if you yeah. did... You know that there's some <laughs> really messed up stuff there. And I mean, I actually am a fan of Singer and I like a lot of his arguments about effective altruism and stuff. But if you actually push the so-called logical arguments that he's putting forward to where Singer is going, I'm not exactly sure you'd be happy with that, right? And it was just a baffling moment for me because I was like, I don't even think he really knows Singer all that well. I think he just kind of looked up I his wiki page and was like, oh yeah, this guy's a utilitarian, cost-benefit analysis, let the ends justify the means. 100%. Let's go with that. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I doubt he bothered to actually understand. I mean, just given, given the level of analysis I've seen him engage with philosophy, uh, the, the thing I mentioned before we got on, but the, he, he does this like every year, he'll give a new version of this argument for why philosophy is bad. And he's like, look, there's this thing called continental philosophy. Like there's no continental chemistry. What is this? Like, this is nonsense. And, and, like this is his big argument against philosophy. So I mean, yeah, I doubt he understands Peter Singer that deeply. <laughs> I mean, why are they called French crepes? Okay, anyone can make yeah. a crepe. Bad yeah. idea. Not going to Paris yep. anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why? Why are there yeah. French fries? But you know, yeah. like, there, there aren't. Uh, <laughs> you know, there there aren't French baked potatoes. You know, like is is there is there a yeah. reason that you can pre prepare these potatoes in this way in France? Yeah, but you can't. Yeah, like, that doesn't make any yeah. sense. Uh, yeah. which, this, which ar this argument like against <laughs> yeah this argument against a field of study based on them having some regional names <laughs> for some, it's like there's an austrian school of economics what's going on here like this is madness there's a copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics come on like what what is this madness it, <laughs> it, it's like it's like reason turned like turned on its head by going by going too like take like going too literally almost it's like yeah you've kind of defeated the purpose <laughs> yeah. it. Um, really just really bizarre but the yeah. but the, the kafka thing was was oh, oh yeah, that was sublime really <laughs> yeah I mean, ironically no, it almost reminded me of somebody in a kafka novel right like one of these bureaucrats <laughs> who's just exceptionally literal minded right and will not allow like any yeah. Yeah, i was like you you are a fucking character in the castle you are part of the yeah. world <laughs> you are <laughs> <laughs> not the metamorphosis, maybe, but you're definitely in Kafka's universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's really what he's doing. Maybe this is like this actual, like, really deep <laughs> parody. He's like, I'm going to play a Kafka character here in critiquing Kafka. This will be great. I mean, yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, yeah, actually, I could totally imagine like that as a version of the castle where. Like Joseph K is trying to, you know, try to understand, you know, like what, like why he's, you know, he's being prosecuted, you know, persecuted this way. And, you know, it's like, why is this happening? And Dawkins says, well, because you were brought here, you know, by, by, by the constables. And he's like, yeah, but why? Well, they were given an order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're properly following the proper protocol. Okay. That's all we need to know. <laughs> if he had he turned into an ape, it would have been possible. But 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be funny. Yeah, you know, there's an alternate universe with the metamorphosis where it turns into a monkey, and Dawkins is like, this is so realistic. It's hearkening back to our familial ancestors. Five mm -hmm. stars to the metamorphosis. <laughs> yeah. he, loves, he loves the Poe story, Murders in the Rue Morgue, where, like, spoiler alert, it's, a, it's, an, it's an orangutan. That does, he was like, oh, perfectly possible. Love that. Story. Yeah. Just blow the Rue Morgue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I love, and basically, like, his, his objection to continental philosophy and his objection to Kafka are pretty similar. Uh, they, although, like, I guess in the Kafka thing case, he's trying a little bit harder to understand what's going on there, but not much, because, like, the end of that tweet was like, well, you know, is there a metaphor here? I don't get it. Yeah. You know? like, like, he, like, he, like, he expects the story to end with, like, a prose version of the end of an after-school special where it's like, yeah. you know, well, we laughed a lot today, but, like, here's the lesson. You know, like, <laughs>You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron-exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron-exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>